Well, we've, we're familiar with the, the, worrying, uh, the worrying news, the worrying predictions. The kiwi could well be extinct um, in parts of New Zealand on the South Island uh, within the next couple of decades. Well, tonight a story of hope regarding the kiwi. David Wallace, he's not a South Islander, he's a private landowner in the North Island, but he cares enough to devote his time and, most importantly, his property to the future of our native wildlife. This is for Mary Durham. Listen. It's the sound of New Zealand the way it used to be, the way some believe it can be again. Here is an opportunity to preserve or to conserve what is left, and we have to hurry to seize this opportunity before it's too late and more species are lost to extinction. Today we're on the hunt for one of those most under threat. It's an angry little kid. Dock worker Joe Tilson's trying to beat the odds and save the kiwi. Put his head under your bill so that can... Listen to him. Yeah. Um, this is Uno. Uno's not just any chick. He's part of a project designed to save the kiwi on mainland New Zealand. In two months' time, Uno will be six months old and hopefully about 1,200 grams. By that stage, he'll be big enough to go back to where he was born, Ruapehu. But for the moment, his home's in the Waikato with this man. We've been here for seven years. David Wallace has developed his own kiwi reserve. He takes in newborn chicks from dock workers like Joe. Once the kiwis are strong enough to fend off predators, they're released into the wild. They've got a shot at life and probably will have something like a 95% survival rate compared to the 5% survival rate they have as they emerge from the egg in the wild at the present time without any pest and predator control. They have that chance because David's property is unique. He's fenced off 16 hectares, killed all the pests, predators and vermin inside, in effect creating his own mainland island. The uniqueness of New Zealand is, is one of the things we, we seek to, to hold, to retain as much as we can. And we can only do that uh, in an absolute sense, or as much as absolute as you can get, in the complete absence of introduced pests. Once David and his team decided a fence was the answer, they had to find one which would withstand any animal who threatened kiwi. I can recall the team of four or five or six people who were involved in this development of the pest proof fencing gathering round our table back at home, defeated yet again, and shaking our heads and wondering what to do next. After a year, they finally came up with something that worked. We used this tracking tunnel to tell us whether, in fact, we are pest free in the valley. All the evidence says they are, and now Doc wants to place another 20 kiwi chicks there in spring. Instead of getting artificially fed and having nowhere to exercise properly, um, they're, they're just sort of feeding themselves, which is what they do naturally in the wild. And what we've noticed is that they're not putting on weight as fast as they do in the captive rearing facility, but the weight they're putting on is much healthier and it's all muscle. When they go back into the wild, they... Um, they don't find it so hard to adapt. A few kilometres out of Karapero lies the extension to David's dream. He's formed a trust to put a 50 kilometre fence around Mount Mangatautari. The Department of Conservation estimate there are only 10 pairs of breeding kiwi left in the king country and uh, at the rate of uh, ex uh, decline in those populations, uh, most New Zealanders will never be able to see them in their natural environment on mainland New Zealand. And it's something that we just have to do for our children's sake, even if not for our own. Local iwi private landowners, the council and dock have all become involved, desperate to restore what once was. It's a wonderful, wonderful idea, and uh, if we can pull it off, uh, we'll be that much rich for it. It's estimated the project will cost between 12 to 14 million dollars. Small money, the trust says, if our bush can once again ring out in a chorus like this. Beautiful, isn't it wonderful, the dedication of people. David Wallace says the 16th Kiwi Chick was released today. Before we go uh, tonight, a note about um, our story last night regarding the people of Old Eddy Point, which is south of Auckland on the way to Thames. They're waiting for a phone service from Telecom. And Telecom uh, tell us they had been working on connecting the customers out there for months. They tell us they needed resource consent and the gear. Everyone in O'Reilly Point was told on Thursday of last week, says Telecom, that their phones would be connected uh, on Tuesday. They were told this before the Homes program became involved, 
and the phones indeed were connected on Tuesday. So the timing of our story was just a coincidence. Everybody's happy, I hope. Those were our people today. That's Holmes tonight. Update proudly brought to you by the bank that's one step ahead, ASB Bank. Good evening. The Prime Minister says she's taking a veiled threat made in the name of Osama bin Laden seriously. In a new taped message, the Bali bombings are praised, and Australia's told it paid the price for ignoring warnings to stay out of Afghanistan and East Timor. New Zealand troops are also serving in both places. Forecast is warned New Zealand is in for a share of the devastating big dry that's brought drought across the Tasman. And a new all-black combination prepares to be tested against France. That's all on One News Late Edition tonight at 10.35.